Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the lashing a little bit of the canoe. Uh, and I apologize in advance, I need both hands for this. Uh, and so to hold the camera I literally have a clamp onto the boat, onto another clamp, onto the camera which is clamped because I don't have like a tripod or anything. Uh, because this is not something that I do regularly. So, uh, but anyway, we'll give you an idea of how to lash the boat together. Just to talk about lashing a little bit. Uh, I have seen on YouTube some people just super glue this together, which is great. It goes quick. Um, the only issue with that is it's going to be a firm, non-flexible joint. And so these boats are going to want to flex. As the water hits them, they kind of want to flex with the waves. And so a lot of those joints will start to pop out. Um, but lashing, is a, it gives you a strong, uh, flexible joint. So the boat will be able to flex along with the water. I have seen people also lash them and glue them, uh, which kind of the principle is if some is good, more is better. Uh, but that's actually not very true. They just kind of will counteract each other um, and kind of a waste of time. But go for it if you want to do that. Uh, it doesn't really accomplish anything in my mind. Uh, so things you're going to need for the lashing. Uh, most importantly, you need a little dowel. Uh, I just, this is just a piece of, uh, one of those foam paint brushes for like 90 cents. Uh, they took the paintbrush off. That'll save your hands a lot. Um, the other thing you'll need is this, uh, sinew. It's, uh, just a fake sinew I got off of Amazon. I tried to find it in some, like, Joanne Fabrics or, uh, Michaels, any of those stores. I couldn't find it. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong spot. But, uh, this is something you're going to want. You only need one roll for the whole boat. It's like... 15 bucks, um, but it's great stuff. It's incredibly strong and it also kind of adheres to itself a little bit And so you'll see once you pull it tight. It really doesn't give a lot which would be helpful for this um, The other thing that I did and I assume once you lay out your ribs, you're fine, but uh, this helps me lay out the ribs I made a little uh, Just a little jig I guess that uh, one side is some of my ribs are six inches apart on center others are six and a half on center depending on the boat, uh, and that's just because I didn't think about it before I stood them up, and so uh, I had to adjust my rib placement. <laughs> but basically, uh, this jig helps me kind of uh, make sure that that these joints are centered uh, in between, and so that that's a good. This is a six inch on center one. Um, okay, so to start, you're going to take your lashing, and uh, we're just going to take out roughly an arm's like four to five feet of this stuff um, it's you know pretty arbitrary amount and you can cut that with, I have cut it with an exacto knife whatever but I haven't had scissors um, and the important thing is your stop or not uh, and so you don't want to tie this is a do not want to tie like you tie your shoelace just an overhand knot um, it's gonna look like like that and that will slip. There's just not enough there to hold it. And you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on this knot. So an overhand knot won't work. Um, and so what we want to do is tie what's called a figure eight knot. Uh, and you can do that. You just make a loop. And you can either twist the loop, which is what I generally do, and then put the string back uh, through the hole like that. And it will form this, this figure eight looking thing. Or uh, if you want to do it a different way, accomplishes the same thing is you make a loop and then spin the end around the string once and then back through um, and again you'll see that figure eight forming there uh, right there so that will give you a figure eight knot there's a lot of friction in that and the knot won't slip um, and you just tighten that down towards the end actually I'd like to get a little closer to the end generally but uh, not on this so once you have your stopper knot in place, you're going to put it around the joint that you're trying to lash uh, with the stopper knot in your left hand. And then you just make a six out of that um, end of the rope in your left, <coughs> left hand. Uh, so you have your stopper knot here with a loop and then the, the string coming out. You take the other side and feed it through that loop, uh, which would also be the base of the six. And you can feed it all the way through. Um, and then what will happen is as you tighten it down, that knot will compress on itself and it, it will slip all the way 
uh, until it's wrapped nice and tightly around the rib. So you just tighten it down until it uh, locks. And now the idea is to basically just wrap it around um, in a way that will pull these two together. Uh, I think there are several different ways to do this. I've seen plenty of ways online. I don't know that there's really even a wrong way to do it. Um, but this is after you do whatever. There's about 200 of them you have to do on this boat. Uh, so after you do your first 100, you'll have it down pat. So that's not a problem. Uh, but this is my method anyway. So I curve around um, the stringer once and then cross it over. Um, and... Uh, bring it back down, curve back over the stringer, and cross over underneath. Uh, and that forms a nice X on the under underside, and that X will help uh, pull this together nice and evenly. Pass underneath the rib one time, and this is going to be the first place where we tighten, uh, just pulling those two together. We're actually going to tighten it in three different phases. Um, and it'll just get kind of progressively tighter down. So wrap your sinew around your dowel uh, and you're just going to pull on this and you can pretty much pull as hard as you want. You can see me shaking. It's, it's really not going to break. Uh, if you break it, it's probably because your corners are too sharp and it's uh, just fraying the sinew. Um, so once you've got that tightened down, keep the tension on a little bit and just wrap around the other side of the stringer and then we'll do that again um, wrap around the other side of the stringer and bring this bottom piece up uh, which will just help to lock that X in place um, so now that's down and I will bring that around so that it takes out all the slack in the opposite direction which I tightened it and there is our finished X for the first part now the other thing to remember is that all this part is the outside of the boat that will all be covered in fabric what you're actually going to see is the underside uh, so every once in a while I'll just check your underside and make sure it looks presentable but uh, it shouldn't be a problem now, now that we have our X tightened down we're going to wrap down underneath the rib and just go under over under over so under the rib over the stringer, under the back of the rib, over the stringer, under the rib, and there we go. We have it nice and wrapped around. And this would be the second time where we tighten these two down and pull them together. So again, wrap around the dowel, and you're going to pull tightly. Um, now holding that pressure on, I cross back over the front rib, and I'm going to wrap around uh, underneath everything and the idea behind this is we're going to pull the, that under over even tighter uh, so we're wrapping around that joint right now uh, and as we pull this tighter it'll pull those under over strings in towards the center and just tighten them down even more so this will be the third time when we really tighten and you can hear the wood uh, almost cracking into place not cracking as in breaking, but just kind of, uh, as it tightens down, it, it gets stressed, which is good. That's what we want. That means we're, we're moving it. Uh, okay, now I, I lock that into place now that we've got that tightened. So I'll go around again underneath and up through the hole. So you see up through that hole, close it down. And now this, we're going to go back. And we'll gain all that string back, and we'll wrap back around. Um, and then what we're going to do is, is go back the opposite way uh, of the way we started. And that will put these two opposing forces uh, pulling on each other. And so they really shouldn't, you know, if one of them, if one of them starts to give out, it'll pull on the other one. Um, and so it... Uh, should help lock that into place. So we just did the same step, just in reverse. Um, and then we'll tighten that down. There. Now 
that's pretty much our joint. So now all we have to do is tie that off to make sure it doesn't get, um, you know, if you just leave it, then it'll it'll lose tension. So all we're doing now is just making sure that it, it won't lose tension on itself. Um, so I end up going kind of just back and forth, tying these little knots around the stringer. Um, and again, putting them in opposite directions so that they have these opposing forces against each other. And we'll go once more around the rib, uh, which, you know, this, this is just an extra precaution. It doesn't really matter how you, how you do that. Um, but it just will help us keep that tension on there. So once more around the rib, and then once more backwards. We're going to cinch that down and then just tie it off uh, and this will be again a knot that can't slip uh, so you don't lose that tension. Um, tie that knot as close to the end as you can because whatever tension you leave in there will ultimately come out and loosen the joint. Uh, so I have about a millimeter there, I can't get it all the way down. but. That's it, and then you cut off the end, and that is a nice, tight, and secure joint that you you know you're not gonna move. Um, so that's it. You'll have to watch this video several times. I'm sure it's uh, probably not explained the best way. Again, like I said, I'm not sure that there's really a wrong way to do it, um, as long as you basically want to make make that tension force pulling these two together and create a lot of friction so that it won't slide back against itself. Um, that's it. So you do that, all 200 joints. That takes a while, hurts your hands. Um, but hopefully you'll be left with a nice strong result at the end. All right.